in last class we studied the addition of vectors there are two methods to add two vectors what are the methods yes graphical method and analytical method now we are discussing the second method analytical method analytical method what is the drawback of graphical method in graphical method we must draw each and every vector it is difficult because if we draw a vector we must have a scale with a suitable scale we draw with a vector suppose vector p and vector q and uh, draw vector r and uh, measure the length and uh, measure the angle then we got the answer it is difficult in exam isn't it yes but this method is simple to add to vectors but we how to how to use this analytical method actually this method is to deduce an expression using this expression we can add to vectors that is analytical method we are using parallelogram law to find out the equation okay yes suppose we have two vectors suppose we have two vectors okay one vector called p and the second vector called q which are connected tail to tail that is parallelogram no method complete the parallelogram complete the parallelogram then what is the resultant what is the resultant yes this diagonal is the resultant r okay suppose this is o this is denoted by a this is denoted by b b this is denoted by c or a b c the angle between p and q is theta the angle between resultant and p is alpha two angle theta and alpha now draw a perpendicular from c along oa draw a perpendicular this figure is very very important so please uh, please not draw with me this figure cd draw cd perpendicular to od okay now what is this angle this is q this is parallel side therefore it also q ac equal to vector q isn't it yes then this angle theta what is this angle it also theta parallel sides okay also i redraw this small triangle a d c a c d triangle ACD 
ए सी एस क्यू ए सी एस क्यू वि जस्ट ओणी मैग्निट्यूड दर् फॉर सिंप्ली क्यू ए सी एस क्यू ए डी सी डी आीट फ्रम दी ट्रयांगि ए सी डी ए सी डी वाट तीट आ सैन तीट वाट तीट How we find cos theta? Cos theta is adjacent side by hypotenuse. Cos theta is adjacent side by hypotenuse. What is the adjacent side? Theta is here. Adjacent side AD. Then AD by AC. AD by AC is the cos theta. Then AD equal to what? AD equal to AC cos theta. AD equal to AC cos theta. What is AC? AC is Q, isn't it? AC is Q. Then what is AD? AD equal to Q cos theta. AD equal to Q cos theta. Okay. Also, what is sine theta? From this figure, what is sine theta? It's very important. What is sine theta? Sine theta is opposite side by hypotenuse. What is the opposite side of theta? CD. Then we can write CD by AC. Therefore, CD equal to AC sine theta. What is AC? AC equal to Q. That is Q sine theta. CD equal to Q sine theta. Okay. AD Q cos theta CD Q sin theta Okay Is it okay Clear Look here Then this CD is Q sin theta This AD is Q cos theta Q cos theta. Note these two sides, AD and CD. Okay. Now we are deriving the equation using analytical method. We have a right-angled triangle called OCD. This is the OCD. It is a right-angled triangle because CD is perpendicular to. OD therefore it is a right angle triangle OCD we can use pythagoras theorem in right angle triangle okay apply pythagoras theorem then oc square equal to od square plus cd square what is od od equal to oa plus ad isn't it this is od from here to here oa and then ad that, that is oa plus ad oa plus ad oa plus ad od square that is oa plus ad all square plus cd square okay OC square equal to OC square equal to OA plus AD all square plus CD square. What is OA plus AD all square? This is A plus B all square. Expand OA square plus 2 into OA into AD plus AD square. Is it okay? Plus Last term C D square plus C D square. Okay. A D square plus C D square. What is A D square plus C D square? This is A D, this is C D. A D square plus C D square equal to A C square, isn't it? Yes, Pythagoras theorem. Using this triangle, in this triangle, AD square plus CD square equal to A C square. That is, this side is A C square. Then the remaining terms are OA square plus 2 into OA into AD plus AC square we got. Okay. Then put the values. We find the magnitude only. Now we find only magnitude. We find the direction later. Okay. 
if we if we are taking magnitude we just write the uh, letter magnitude of vector r is r magnitude of vector q is q magnitude of vector p is just p like that okay what is oc oc is r what is oa oa is p what is ad ad is q cos theta isn't it yes put this values in this equation look here oc is r that is r square is equal to what is oa oa what is oa is p yes it is p p square p square plus 2 into p into what is ad ad here ad is equal to q cos theta p into q cos theta plus ac square plus ac square sorry what is ac what is ac ac is q that is q square then r is equal to r is the magnitude of resultant r equal to root of p square plus p square plus 2 pq cos theta plus q square it is the magnitude of resultant of two vectors okay what is the magnitude of resultant of two vectors using analytical method we got an equation of resultant magnitude of resultant r equal to root of p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta very very important equation and derivation we get the magnitude of resultant of two vectors okay suppose we have to force us the first case we have to force us 5 newton and uh, uh, suppose 5 newton and uh, 7 newton 7 newton and making an angle 90 degree then what is the resultant uh, magnitude of resultant r equal to first put the values in this equation p is equal to suppose 5 we can take 5 newton as p and 7 newton as q then uh, r is equal to root of 5 square plus 7 square plus 2 into 5 into 7 into cos 90 using the calculator we can find out the magnitude of resultant uh, that is the net force okay we just find the magnitude only magnitude you have to find the direction also how to find the direction what is the direction look the figure That is the direction. This angle alpha is the direction, isn't it? If we got the angle alpha, you can say the direction is the resultant is this angle from P. Suppose alpha equal to 30 degree. The direction of the resultant is 30 degree from vector P. That is the direction. Okay. How to find alpha? Use this triangle OCD, right angle triangle. How to find alpha? If you how to find, if you how to find the angle, use tan. That is tan alpha. Find tan alpha in this figure. Tan alpha equal to what is tan theta? Tan theta is opposite side by adjacent side. Tan theta is 
opposite side by adjacent side here opposite side is cd the adjacent side is od that is tan theta along with here tan alpha here is the angle alpha theta is already taken as the angle between p and q therefore angle between resultant is alpha then tan alpha equal to cd by od okay i place this figure here if you want i can type yes look tan alpha is equal to tan alpha equal to cd by od cd by od what is od oa plus ad as we take earlier cd by oa plus ad put the values tan alpha equal to what is cd what is cd cd is q sin theta cd q sin theta what is ad q cos theta what is oa oa is p that is cd equal to q sin theta q sin theta divided by sin theta divided by o is p plus ad is q cos theta that is tan alpha equal to q sin theta by p plus q cos theta this is the direction of the resultant okay actually direction is alpha if you write tan alpha then also you get mark but if tan alpha equal to q sin theta by p plus q cos theta then alpha equal to take the tan in right side we called it tan inverse that is inverse function inverse trigonometry you will study in the mathematics alpha equal to tan inverse this term in bracket tan inverse q sin theta by p plus q cos theta you can find the value of angle using inverse function okay value theta angle equal to tan inverse q sin theta by p plus q cos theta is it clear very very important important relation very very important relation derivation okay it is a three mark or four mark question if you are asked both magnitude and direction maybe you, we can score up to four mark minimum three mark you must study this derivation analytical method also remember the equations by heart the equations magnitude r equal to p root of p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta and tan alpha equal to q sin theta by p plus q cos theta okay or alpha equal to tan inverse q sin theta by p plus q cos theta if you feel difficult then you remember this equation is enough yes now here there are some special cases it helps you to find the resultant in problems first case case 1 case 1 suppose theta equal to 0 theta equal to 0 means the two vectors are parallel p and q are parallel then theta equal to 0 that is parallel vectors yes then what is the resultant magnitude of resultant r equal to root of p square plus q square plus 2 pq 2 pq cos theta just put the value value of theta in this equation you know what is cos zero what is cos zero what is cos 90 what is cos 180 180 what is sin zero 
sin 0 what is sin 90 what is sin 180 you already studied what is cos 0 cos 0 1 what is cos 90 cos 90 0 ok cos 180 minus 1 sin 0 0 sin 90 1 sin 180 minus 1 sorry sin sin 180 0 sin 180 0 please feed this result in your mind ok now here theta is 0 here theta is 0 then what is cos 0 cos 0 equal to cos 0 equal to 1 then r is equal to root of p square plus q square plus 2pq what is this in the bracket a square plus b square plus 2ab a plus b all square then r equal to root of p plus q all square p plus q all square here root and here square root and square will cancel we got r equal to p plus q what is mean r is the magnitude of resultant what is it the sum of p and q what is p magnitude of p what is q magnitude of q that is magnitude of r equal to magnitude of p plus magnitude of q that means the magnitude of the resultant is sum of magnitudes of the two vectors magnitude of the resultant is sum of magnitudes of the two vectors this is the first case also what is the direction direction is given by tan alpha tan alpha equal to q sin 0 by p plus q cos 0 put the angle theta equal to 0 what is sin 0 0 then numerator becomes 0 then the old term old term becomes 0 then tan alpha equal to tan alpha equal to 0 therefore alpha equal to 0 what it mean alpha equal to 0 means the resultant makes an angle 0 with the vector p that is in the same direction resultant also in the same direction is this is p this is q then the resultant is just add the resultant is add this magnitudes and put the same direction r equal to p plus q same direction we got both the magnitude and direction okay this is the first case Now the second case, case 2, second case, suppose theta equal to 180 degree, what is the meaning, P and the Q are opposite, P and the Q are opposite and the parallel vectors, not opposite vectors opposite direction that is and the parallel vectors theta equal to 180 degree then the magnitude of the resultant r equal to root of p square plus q square plus 2 p q cos 180 what is cos 180 cos 180 is minus 1 that is root of p square plus q square plus 2 p q into minus 1 minus 1 that is root of p square plus q square minus 2 p q that is root of p minus q all square that is what is it 
that is root and square will cancel equal to p minus q that is r equal to p minus q what is the meaning the magnitude of the result and r equal to the difference of the magnitude of p and q okay suppose this is p this is q opposite direction theta equal to 180 degree then to find the resultant the difference of the magnitude is taken difference the difference the length from q from p p from q we got like a vector and then what is the direction direction which direction is bigger that direction here direction of q r is towards this direction towards q because q is bigger if p is bigger then what happen if p is bigger then what is the resultant okay then uh, different uh, subtract this length from here and we got this length which direction bigger vector is p this direction this is vector r that means the magnitude of resultant is the difference of magnitude of the two vectors and the direction is direction of the bigger vector we can find the result direction of the resultant using tan alpha tan alpha equal to tan alpha equal to q sin 180 by p plus q cos 180 cos 180 sin 180 is 0 therefore this term becomes 0 tan alpha equal to 0 tan alpha equal to 0 means alpha equal to 0 or 180 in first case only 0 why same direction but here two directions the direction of the bigger vector so we have taken 0 or 180 degree if the bigger vector is in right then uh, the resultant also towards the right if the bigger vector is towards left then the direction of the r is also towards the left that is alpha equal to 0 or 180 degree this is the second case now third case case 3 case 3 very important case many questions are related to this case okay Third case is theta equal to 90 degree that is perpendicular. Two vectors are perpendicular. What is the meaning? Two vectors. Suppose two forces are perpendicular. Suppose two forces are acting perpendicular then theta equal to 90 degree. This is the case. Theta equal to 90 degree. Then what is the magnitude and direction of the result? And the magnitude r equal to root of p square plus q square plus 2pq cos 90. What is cos 90? 0. Then this term becomes 0. 2pq cos 90 equal to 0. Then what is r? r equal to root of p square plus q square. This is the magnitude of the resultant. Then what is the direction? Tan alpha equal to q sin 90 by p plus q cos 90. What is sin 90? sin 91 cos 90 0 then tan alpha equal to q by p isn't it q cos theta becomes 0 then q by p that is tan alpha equal to tan alpha equal to q by p or alpha equal to tan inverse of tan inverse of q by p 
okay tan alpha is the yes we can find the direction by tan alpha equal to yes q by p we use sin if you use tan or sin the second vector is first that is q by p tan q by p remember q by p q by p okay then last method this is not a special case say so actually this is the third case what is the third case theta equal to 90 degree when p is equal to q that is theta equal to 90 and p is equal to q what's the meaning two vectors are equal magnitude p and q are equal magnitude but opposite directions not equal therefore they are not equal vectors magnitude only equal p and q and acting at a 90 degree this is the case then what is the resultant r is equal to root of p square plus q square plus 2 p q cos cos 90 that is root of p square plus q also p q is equal to p because p is equal to q then p square plus p square the remaining term 0 because cos 90 equal to cos 90 equal to 0 therefore root of p square plus p square equal to root of 2 p square root of 2 p square that is root 2 into p square taken outside that is p root p square equal to p that is root 2 p that is r is equal to root 2 p the magnitude of the resultant is root 2 p what is alpha what is the angle tan alpha equal to tan alpha equal to q yes, q sin 90 by p plus q cos 90 is equal to q sin 91 sin 91 cos 90 is 0 therefore q by p q by p since p and q are equal therefore q by p equal to 1 that is tan alpha equal to 1 then what is alpha when it when tan theta becomes 1 at 45 degree therefore alpha equal to 45 degree okay look the first diagram here using parallelogram law or triangle law using parallelogram law we can write the magnitude and direction of the resultant here this is p this is p both are p equal magnitude then this is root 2 p and this angle is 45 degree you can see if two sides are equal then it forms a square the parallelogram is a square then the diagonal is the root 2 the side of the square root 2 p and uh, the angle between diagonal and the one side is 45 degree like that okay it is important you can use these equations then you can solve questions easily so remember these special cases okay four cases first case theta equal to 0 second case theta equal to 180 degree and the parallel third theta equal to 90 degree two vectors are acting perpendicular fourth case theta equal to 90 and p is equal to q and two vectors are two vectors are acting at 90 degree and two vectors are equal magnitude that is p is equal to q okay if if vector p is equal to vector q then what is the meaning vector p is equal to vector q meaning two vectors are like this equal magnitude equal direction okay 
for one example suppose we have two forces 5 newton and 7 newton acting at an angle theta equal to 60 degree find the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector resultant force here f1 here f1 equal to 5 newton f2 equal to 7 newton theta equal to 60 degree then the magnitude of the resultant force r equal to root of p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta that is 5 square plus 7 square plus 2 into 5 into 7 into cos 60 using calculator you find out the value it is the magnitude of the resultant force okay clear and uh, what is the angle of the resultant what's the direction of the resultant it's the angle tan alpha equal to q sin theta by q sin theta by p plus q cos theta okay tan alpha equal to q sin theta first vector we can take an p and the second vector q then q is 7 7 sin sin 60 by p 5 plus q 7 cos 60 using calculator you can find a uh, 7 sin 60 And five plus seven cos sixty. You got the answer tan alpha. Then alpha is equal to tan inverse. In calculator, you can find the inverse very easily. Uh, yes. Using the shift, you got the uh, tan inverse function. Tan inverse of this this term. You got the angle, which gives the direction. This is the Uh, this is useful for solving problems in uh, vector quantities uh, problems involving vector quantities like a force uh, acceleration displacement uh, velocity torque uh, momentum impulse etc etc so many examples are for uh, vectors